Stephanie and today I'm going to show you how to draw a horse's head. Now um, I'm doing this now because I have a workshop coming up where we are going to do an ink and wash horse head um, but it's going to be good to have a go at this even if that workshop's already gone past before you find the video. So I put a link to it in the comments but if it's already gone I hope this is still very useful for you. So here we go. If you have a look at any animal head probably the first shape that you want to start with is going to be a circle um, and so that's going to be the same here and what I want is to um, make the circle. It's not going to sort of come cover up the whole head but I want that circle to include the jaw pretty much and then we're coming sort of we're going to ignore where this eye is sticking out on the other side but we're just going to come to around here okay so that's where more or less we want our circle to cover if you end up with a, a circle that's sitting a little bit smaller into there it's still a useful thing to start with so let's have a, a go at putting in a little bit of a circle if you want to measure then it's perfectly fine to sort of think okay how far across how big do you want your circle to be um, and you can just do a little rough sort of dash here and there um, but otherwise just go for it so we have a, a nice sweeping circle coming in somewhere around here keep it nice and light don't go in too heavy too soon because of course these initial marks are probably going to all be rubbed out at the end so you don't want to go in too heavy so we've just got a nice circle to start with then we can think about okay the length of the head um, and getting in maybe this front section so I want to come down to um, just about where the the nostrils are sitting so it's in the middle of the nostrils and we're going up to the top of the head now this circle it probably hasn't gone all the way up to the very very top of the top of the the head or top of the mane here so we want to add a little bit height onto that again if you want to do a bit of measuring if you've got a particular horse that you're copying then you may want to measure now you can see I generally just measure with whatever pencil or tool I'm using but if you want to go and get a ruler make it a little bit easier for yourself then there's nothing wrong with that it's not cheating it's just being um, using the tools that you've got to hand so what I want is just to think about okay how long do I want to go and it's all a little bit rough at this stage you can change things around you don't have to keep with the measurements that you've got right at this point you can add or take away as needed now I want to have kind of like a, a slightly bent um, or curved triangle type shape to start with so I'm just finding my way around here you can see I'm being a little bit cautious with the marks that I'm making to start with just finding my way around what feels right keep looking at your reference so we've got you see it's a bit curved a bit curved on the edge but uh, it's almost like a, a triangle shape so this is just relating to that front section of the face now horses heads they have their eyes on the side of the head not on the front so we want that front section separate from where we're going to put the eyes the eyes can go on um, afterwards so before we get there I want to just finish off what's going on with the shaping down at the muzzle so we've got to the shape pretty much somewhere around here but I want to have a go at filling that in so you can either go in and sort of put a little bit of a boxy shape on the edge here or you can go in and sort of put another circle two ways that you can approach it so I'm gonna do a kind of shape something like that and we can sort out again the actual outline once we've got these blocks in place so we've got 
maybe just to have another check of the length, more or less, and see it's longer than the tool that I'm using, so I can just go up and think, okay, how far is it relating to the same? I got about the roughly the same shape at the top there, which is pretty much is. So the other thing you want to do is if you have a particular horse, remember that um, each individual horse, each individual species of horse is going to be slightly different. Um, so if you've got a thoroughbred, then the faces are a little bit longer and thinner. Proportionally, if you've got a shy horse, it's going to be quite stocky. Um, ponies, again, <laughs> sort of, I think in new forest ponies, quite sort of short and stocky face. Um, so make sure that the proportions you're putting down relate to the actual horse that you're drawing. So here we go. Let's have those lines all in there let's go ahead and look at the eyes now again you may want to do a little bit of measurement to see how far down the face you want the eyes to be and again i'm just going to do that by using the point of my pencil up at the top of the head and then using a fingernail or something to place that position and i'm going to go to the middle of the eye here you could go to the top of the eye if you prefer, or the bottom of the eye, whatever is easiest for you. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go up to the top of the eye for this because it may be a little bit easier for you to see um, for the, the mark that I'm going to put in next. So we're going to just transfer that measurement across. You can see here, that's where I want to have the top of the eye coming through. Now, my nice and simple way have <laughs> put in, in the positioning of both eyes at the same time is to just do a bit like a visor shape going across and it comes out on the far side a bit like a, a rounded shape or sometimes a bit more triangular and we're going to do the same thing over this side again maybe just have a little bit of a measurement how far out do you need to go so where's the far side of the eye in relation maybe I'm going a bit too far there see so measuring is very helpful and we just go in in and doing a little rounded shape to start off with so something like that will do if you end up with a few too many lines just gently get rid of those I've just got a bit of putty rubber here it's very useful for just simplifying the, the lines if you end up with too many it can get complicated so that just simplifies everything out okay so then let's move back down and this is where we're going to do sort of a, a similar shape but opposite and a bit wider to help us put in the nostrils and again you can see a little bit of shape of the nostril on the other side and my printout's a little bit faint on on the screen so i'm just gonna and draw around the edge so you can see a little bit more clearly what's actually going on there it's got a very light color here anyway so what we can do same thing have a think about where you want to go with these nostril shapes maybe have a think about how far down you need to go so again we could do a little bit of measuring and just have a think about how far, whoops, doing a bit of a, a funny angle here so that my hand doesn't go over the screen too much. There we go, we can go up to about there. Right, so here we go, we've got another little shape, rounded shape. Make sure that the two sides are in line otherwise you don't want a nostril up here and one down there or something odd because it will look quite weird so make sure that they are lined up and we want a reasonable amount of space from the nostril over to the other side of the muzzle there right so we've got nice framework starting up what we do we'll work into that continually um, but there's a few more marks that we need to get in 
and we want to sort of at the moment we've just got a bit of a floating face here so let's get a little bit of sense of what's going on over this other side and so you might want to go in and have another think about this draw and I can see that my circle my original circle is a bit small so what I want to do is think about from one side of the face to the draw where do I need to go actually it's not bad it's not bad I think it's down here I've come out too far here so let's have another little look so what I want is maybe to come through with a bit more jaw here and we'll get rid of that line where I've started to come up without measuring and we'll come through a bit thinner have a look at the angle here so we've got rounded shape we've got pretty much a straight line at a, a diagonal and then we can come back and sort out what's going on at the bottom here so I'm just going to thin it down there we go looking a bit better so let's have another look make sure that everything is lining up making sense maybe let's bring down the rounded shape a touch more let's measure from over to the top of the head here as I'm doing that a little bit of a guesswork so we want to have a little bit more coming out there again when I start drawing I start talking a little bit less so <laughs> hopefully you can see what I'm doing I'm just sort of measuring certain points and just double checking that it is making a bit of sense and you could also have another think about this line so I'm going to put a little bit more of a curve an inwards curve up here so again it's just thinning the face out a little bit so you're building it up structure and then you work into it okay so let's get in a bit of the neck as well so this is going to be at an angle go from top of the head we're going at a very very slight angle and it's also slightly curved if you can do the curve at the same time then go for it if you find it easier just do a straight line and then put the curve in over the top and um, sometimes it's easier to break things up by doing it in two stages if you can do it all in one go just go for it and then we want the bottom of the neck now this is something again people find tricky with horses is how wide you need to go so the the angle on the top of the neck where the mane is is going to be a completely different angle to the bottom and sometimes you will find that your your brain plays tricks on you and so you're not looking at what's actually there and you're just guessing so i want to have a think about this angle that is pretty sharp okay so then i want to also think whereabouts do i need to go from there in terms of where the eye position is in terms of where the jaw is and i'm going to go in back here nice sharp angle and you can see we've got a pretty um thin area just at where the head begins and then it becomes quite wide as you go down so again you could do a little bit of a check and sort of see whether that is making sense right so from there um let's again just have a look we've got nice rounded shape of the jaw we've got this line that's a little bit flatter straighter we've got what's coming in under here where we want to separate out a little bit of the mouth shape so we've got this is the nostrils so I've just joined up at the moment then we want to have a separate shape for the upper lip 
and that will come in, in this case, quite close to the edge um, of the outline there. And there we want to separate out another line for the bottom lip, bottom jaw. And this is going to be, can you see that it overlaps here? So we want to have pretty big gap. Let's bring it in a little bit more than that even. Um, and this is kind of like a bucket shape at the bottom. <laughs> so you've got just a little wedge in here and then we want to come and join that up to the, the straighter line at that point. The line of the mouth, as I said, is very, near, very close um, to that edge, very near there. So what we want to do is start there, make sure that it's quite a gentle little shape. So I'm going to take off a bit of an edge there. Gives a little bit wider space for the bottom lip in here. And then it comes out. And again, let's just soften it off on the other side. Bit too square there. So there we go. Okay, so that's getting in slightly closer to the actual shapes. Before we do anything else down there, let's go have a look at ears. <laughs> so, very simple thing that you can do um, with ears is to just join them up together. So like we've done with the eyes and the nostrils, let's just take that as one complete shape. And if you do that, you can draw a circle or a sort of oval, kind of ellipse shape um, that just encompasses both ears in one go. Again, you might want to just check approximately how wide you want to go. Check in comparison with the edge of the eye, how far out, maybe that's a bit too far, let's bring it in a bit here, and then that means the other ear is going to go across um, quite a way out the other side. So I'm just going to change hands to do that, bring it over across that way. Okay, and then what we need to do is to draw a ellipse shape that's going to kind of encompass both ears. Once you have that elliptical shape, you can then start to divide it up into the two separate ears. But it's a good way to start off with, especially if you're drawing horses from life at any point, because it's a bit quicker. You can go back and you can sort of get a feel for where they placed. And then if the horse moves off, you've got that structure that you can then split up later on in your own time. So what I would do to start off with is to just make sure, because again, sometimes you can go a little bit off, make sure that those outside edges are in the correct place and just compare that to what you've got drawn underneath. So I might just bring this side out even more, even more. You'd be surprised. Okay, so then have a look at the shape that you've got in the middle. <laughs> so this is a negative shape. It's not actually there, but we can see this sort of wedge, almost triangular wedge shape. And if you can see that, you can hopefully use that to help you draw in between the ears. The other thing is that you may find that you don't, you, your ellipse may go a little bit too high. You maybe don't need to go up to the entire height that you've drawn, but you can go in and use that as a bit of a guideline, a bit of a starting off point. So this is horse's ears. Do point inwards a little bit, just at the very top. It's quite nice, interesting. A little thing to note. So I'm just making sure that side, 
fill in a bit of the edge, the outline, and then I've got that little shape slightly pointed at the top. And going in, so we've got a lovely curve down here. Also have a note of what the ears are doing. Do you see more of the inside of the ear? Do you see a little bit of the outside of the ear? Do you see a lot of the outside ear if that ear was swiveled over, listening to something over the other side? Then you would see a lot more of the um, outside of the ear. So just take a note of the positioning of those ears, how upright they are. And they are very expressive, I find, on horses. So you, you want to have a, a really look, good look at the position of the ears. What are they doing? <laughs> are they nice and alert? And that's what I, I'd like to see. Um, nice and alert ears focusing um, on something sort of over in this direction. It might even be the photographer in this, <laughs> his heart focusing on. Um, but there we go. We like to have um, a little bit of a, an expression going on in there. So make sure as well, the ear that is closest to you in this case it does come down into the head shape. It doesn't just sit on the top. It needs to come down into the actual head. And so it looks like it's a part of the animal. And we can see a little bit of the structure, just a little hint of it in between bits of mane um, that you want to hopefully get in there as well. On the, of course, on the other side, you can't see all that. All you've got is this overlap which is going to be eventually bits of mane on the other side. Okay, so from there, let's um, go in and have a look at this outside edge. So what I want to do is where we've got this bit of eye floating, <laughs> let's go and join that into the skull a bit more, make sure that we're looking at the outside shapes and edges Let's get that nice curve coming in here. And then as we come down to the nostrils, let's just bit of, get a bit of a triangle shape where we've got this curve at the moment, just about there. Let's cut into our circle shape and bring in another quite shallow curve until we come down to about here. That's the, the underside of the the skin that's going over the nostrils and then we can come back into the upper lip so there we go we're getting a little bit more structure i'm just gonna come down and bring in a little bit more of the other side of the muzzle here so we should have a little bit of a change of direction from this angle and then coming down a little bit straighter underneath Right, another thing to note, you may want to put this in at this point, we'll leave it a little bit longer, is to have um, a little bit of an indication of this. It's quite a prominent kind of muscle that sits just under the eye. And again, it is very helpful because you can use that to measure again. So you can check how wide from one point to another point you need to go. So I'm just going to check so yeah maybe a little bit wide across here but actually it's not too bad I'm gonna leave it as that right so from there then let's have a look um, at going up into the eye horses eyes are lovely very soft looking but again have a look at the shape one thing that people do often get wrong is they make the eye tilt in the direction of the head. And it doesn't, okay? If you have a look at the across the top of the eye, it's actually slightly angled upwards. It's either going to be straight or slightly angled upwards. So make sure on your drawing that the top of the eye shape is either straight or slightly upwards. It's very, very 
subtle if it is upwards than it at all so I would aim for straight if possible and then we want the front side of the eye and a little bit of a, an angle coming down here and then you can slightly round off the underside right now into that structure what I want to do is bring in a bit of upper eyelid so if you look at the actual eyeball it's actually quite small and what we've got here is the underlid the upper lid we've got eyelashes going across it's all going on isn't it <laughs> and we've also probably got a little bit of marking that's slightly darker around the eye so don't let that confuse you either I'm going to put in a little bit of a sort of downwards tear duct in there as well so that is again it's working from the bigger shape and then cutting into it with the sort of smaller shapes and, and going into the details from there um, again putty rubber if things start to get a little bit confusing or messy a good thing that you can do is just dab over the top so it's not going to completely erase what you've got but it's just going to lighten it so that you can go back over the key lines the most correct lines and anything that you don't actually need is just knocked back so i can go back over that and just find my way around those better lines um, without all the distraction okay right from there then we've got an eye let's go back down and have a look at this nostril what's going on here now we've got a lovely flap of skin which is all included in this um, structure that we've got at the moment so what we need to do is work into that to get the actual nostril hole and it's a little bit like a comma shape <laughs> so have a, a little look at first of all a bit of a, a curve it's like a C a bit of more at the top we've got a bit of a dark shape there coming through now um, in this particular industry it's got quite hairy sort of nostrils so you might want to go in and have a look at any little things like that again depending on what the horse is doing whether it's breathing in breathing out this shape can be all sorts of different sizes so do have a close look at that if the, the horse is sort of snorting out or breathing out quite heavy then this shape is going to be a lot wider so do pay attention to your your individual horse reference i'm just putting in now <laughs> kind of skipping ahead a little bit a little bit of shape of this shadow that's behind um, sometimes i find that putting in sort of mapping out little shadow shapes is quite helpful to do before you start to do any sort of shading or anything like that um, because it can it just sort of simplifies it down gives you an idea of what's going on and in this case it also is informing what's going on in terms of the structure below the surface so we're looking at shadows formed by the curves and the dips in the muscles and the structure below muscles and veins show up quite prominently in horse head structures so if you can map out what's going on there then we can sort of use that to help inform our shading and it becomes a lot more realistic so you see here i've just slightly moved the angle of this particular muscle and again you don't have to go and learn all the names of these muscles um, but if you can memorize some of the basic shapes and structures then it does become very useful 
for looking for those and then putting them in. So I know that there is a, a kind of um, V or possibly Y shape um, of two muscles that go up. One that comes sort of to, to about the, the front of the eye, one that comes behind the eye and they sort of come down somewhere and join in just above the muscles or under in, into this straight section here. So I can, I can look for those particular shapes. And again, the one that just is slightly below there is most prominent. It's the one that's sitting nearer to the surface. So that's the one you're most likely to see. But you might see some sort of hint of um, light here, then dark and then light. So have a look for those little things. Um, that you will, the more you look, the more you will notice and, and be able to find. You, again, this has got a lovely <laughs> sort of covering of um, the tack over the top, but in the structure of the jaw here, you may see more veins um, over the top of this large muscle. So we've got a large sort of circular muscle. And then there are smaller veins that come through. In this particular reference, we can't see it's all covered up, um, but you might notice those as well. And then as we come down to the nose, there are, again, lots of little muscles and vein structures that you can look for in terms of where the light and the darks are forming. OK, so we have got all our basic outline here, and this is where you can start to sort of really focus in on the details. So you, you might go back in and think, first of all, where is this mane going? <laughs> and we can sort of just map out the details of where we want to have the hair going. So I'm just, you can see, I'm just doing some singular lines and little dosh, dats, dashes and dots <laughs> just to work out direction at the moment. You might want to add a little bit of height to the mane if you haven't got that already. Um, and then down the neck, same thing. How long do we need to go? Think about that in terms of the entire neck. How far down the neck at any particular point uh, do we need the mane to come? Just a little bit of measuring. Try and do a little bit of a sort of flicky curve over the top so that you're adding a little bit of irregular structure here. It looks like there is hair covering over the, the neck. It doesn't just come flat from nowhere. It needs to sort of flop over the side here. And again, it's all just very linear at the moment. Once you've got that in then you can go back and add your shading um, into it so before i start shading anything i just want to get rid of the structure lines or the um, little extras that we started with anything that you don't need anymore so this circle that we started off with that can go now this little visor shape that joined up the two eyes that can go Again, the extra shape around the ears can disappear. If, you, if you're leaving this as just a, a sketch, an exercise um, in working out structure, then of course you could leave those lines showing because it shows, oh, it shows you're working. That goes a bit sort of mass class, doesn't it? <laughs> but it does show what you're thinking, how you are. Um, constructing your drawing and it can be useful to look back at if this is just a little sketchbook exercise there's nothing wrong with leaving all of that visible if you are going to add shading and sort of finish it off more over the top then you may want to get rid of those lines so that it doesn't interfere with the details and the tone that you put in So as you can see, I do like my patchy rubber. It gets rid of things very quickly um, and it's nice and soft on the surface of your paper. So it's not going to damage the paper at all. Okay. 
There we go. So we've got our nice outline. Very clear. Now up until this point, I have been using um, just a, a sort of clutch pen or pencil rather. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now is transfer over to a nice soft pencil um, that I can go in. I can use the side of and I can add a little bit of a, a softer, broader line and I can shade in a little bit easier there. So I don't want to do too much more with this. Um, I'm not going in with huge amounts of detail, but I can go and add a little bit of gentle shadow and shade just to help it make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. If you're adding shading, always start off light and then build up gradually darker and darker. You can see here, I'm just leaving a little bit of light in the middle of the eye. I will cut into it a little bit more. Um, but that is just the highlight that I'm, I want to leave there. I'm going to add some more eyelashes over the top as well. But I want to be building up the edges of the eye darker. So this is the eyeball, I should say, that I'm doing now. So the edges are going to be nice and dark. And as I come up to that highlight, then it becomes a bit lighter. So it gives a more 3D feel to that eye. And then you can come in, you can add some shading also to the lids. You might see little bits of light in some areas of the lower lid if it's hitting uh, the lights hitting it it might show up a little bit lighter in some places again the upper lid where the fold is is going to be darker where the light is hitting on this side this little edge maybe a bit lighter as well And as I come up, I can put in another little line of dark up here. Thinking about what's going on in terms of structure. Come through and add a little bit of shadow around here. This is all quite dark on the other side. So have a look at the shapes that you're seeing. Little bits of light and dark. I am leaving out um, the buckles and, and all of that, so I'm just concentrating on the horse's head. If you wanted to include those, then of course use the structure of the head and make sure that you're following the curves around the head when you put on any pieces of, of tack like that. Oops, got the paper underneath which is just coming through, which is not great. Make sure you don't do that. Okay, so I just want a few little lines 
the underside um, of the mouth here. Not too many, but just a little hint. Make sure that that upper lip just goes up a teeny bit in the centre there. Let's darken what's going on here. I want to add a bit more shaping as well to the corner of the mouth here. So a little curve, a little curve inwards. And that on the other side can go nice and dark as well. If you are spending a lot more time on this than I am, make sure that your shading is nice and even. Spend a little bit more time building it up gradually. Um, it's better not to rush these things. Because if you want to get the shading on quicker, use a softer pencil. <laughs> you can get away with a lot more. When you're using a softer pencil to a harder one in terms of getting a nice even layer of shading. Okay, what we haven't done is put any of the markings, so let's get this lovely bit of blaze put through and we've got um, quite an interesting little white marking on the nose as well so we'll put something like that in and then we can go around it with again a little bit of a gentle bit of shade there Now I'm going to finish this off with, not with shading in with pencil, but with using a bit of cloth um, to blend in what I've got, but also add a little bit of a subtle colour around these whiter markings as well. So I'm just concentrating on some of the darkest areas right now. And again, with the main, have a look at shadows between the gaps in the, the longer hairs um, mainly that's going to be more helpful to you and then, then if you sort of go in and try and draw every hair it's going to turn out looking a bit like spaghetti which is not great <laughs> what you want to do is draw in between the hair mainly um, and that will give you a little bit more of an idea of hair longer <laughs> than, than trying to sort of keep going over with these individual lines. So I'm just going to use bits of shading working back up into the main in some areas um, and bringing in those bits of shadow. And I can just finish the top structure off, getting a little bit more unevenness and removing any of that line of the neck that I started with where I don't need it anymore. Okay then, so just a little bit of cloth and I can use that to get a soft blend coming back in. And this is just a, a little off cut of um, cotton I think, it's just a, a bit of rag from something or other. Old tea towels work very well I have to say. <laughs> um, 
so I can use that you can see here I can just get a little bit of an off-white bit of shading it's not really shading it's just sort of off-white um, color that will just make that blaze stand out a little bit more so it all softens together I'm going to come back up into the ear and also do that but I think we need a little bit more fluff detail in there which I have missed at this point okay then we come back with putty rubber and you can sharpen up any bits of white or highlight that you need to I'm just going to put a bit more highlight on the top of that nostril there. If you wanted to, you could add a bit of background shading as well at this point. And then into the main, I'm going to use the, the putty rubber again to draw some highlights into the main itself. So if you're using a putty rubber the first time, make sure that you are molding it into interesting shapes. So here is my most useful shape, which is kind of like a, a very sharp blade on the end. And you can use that to draw lighter lines um, back into any areas of shading that you've put on um, so you do need to keep molding the shape because as you use it it will flatten out but also it's picking up the graphite from your pencil so it doesn't take away as much with the second or third or fourth marking as it does with the first so you do need to remold that shape before you go in and do too many lines okay so there we go last little thing is um, going back up to the years which I have neglected a bit oh dear <laughs> and then I want to add a little bit more hint of the hair my soft inner hairs of the ear so I'm doing that again quite quickly. You could spend lots more time on this, to be honest. Let's just soften it a bit. Again, I'm really sort of looking for the darkest shapes to start with. That's what I want to pay attention to. Um, and then what you can do is to sort of go in with any smaller shapes, any little bits of line and detailing that you can pick out. And it's all done with quite sort of small flicked little dashy lines. Okay, finishing off details, you may find some more hairs coming from the chin. You might find little sort of whiskery hairs 
in other places um, so under the jaw make a note of anything like that and put on those little finishing touches right at the very end okay then so that was a very sort of quick sketch um, working through from building up the beginning structure and then finishing off with a little bit of very very quick shading and and some ideas of where you can start putting details of course i could do an awful lot more to this but um what i wanted was to mainly focus on that sort of beginning stage and then what you can do is you can again work on to it as much as you want to but i think i'm going to call it there um so hopefully you've enjoyed working through that with me and um, I will put in some links at the bottom of the page to look for that and hope to see you for the next video. Bye bye.